no secret that we use AI here at Robin. It's it's in the name of the company, of course. And uh, Emma, you've been here since um, you know, for more than more than two years now, since almost the beginning. Um, so, what is it that we're doing with AI and machine learning at Robin? Why does it make sense for us to use machine learning in our contract platform? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, it's a long time since I joined. Uh, so, when I first joined, I guess I wasn't aware of how many different ways a contract can present itself. The variety is huge and basically, uh, you know, a key point of when you would introduce ML to solving a problem is when you can't code the rules. And seeing the sorts of varieties of contracts that we have and the way in which our lawyers mark them up because it's different for each client and um, they each have, you know, their own set of rules which need to be applied. Um, trying to code a set of rules to get this right all the time is would just be impossible uh so so yeah we can't write the rules so we apply uh, machine learning and the other thing is we need to be able to scale quickly so if our users are you know uploading contracts uh i don't know you know tens of thousands of contracts or something in a day depending on how big the client is you need to be able to scale for that and machine learning it, it is great for that so those are the reasons for, for applying uh, a machine learning solution. However, you know, we know that the machine is not right 100% of the time. And so that's really important for us at Robin is that, you know, we mark up our contracts to a really high precision. They need to be basically perfect. Uh, they need to do what our human lawyer does. Um, and so we know that the AI is not going to reach that. So we have a, a human in the loop or what we call it uh, AI plus. So the human checks the result basically from the machine, which has done, you know, maybe done most of the work, maybe 99% of the work. And the human uh, is just checking and verifying the results there. And so, yeah, the software is aiding the human with, with, their, with their daily work. Great. And, and maybe all for you, Christy, to delve into that a bit more. You know, we talked about um, certain tasks there that machine can try to get right or can learn from data. What are we what are we talking about exactly here? What are the tasks that we're using that model to try to perform to help a person in their legal workflows? Yeah, sure. So um, from the moment that um, a user uploads a document into our system, uh, we do a number of things with it. Uh, the first thing is we look at the contract broadly and try to categorize it. Is it an NDA? Is it a supplier agreement? Is it some other sort of contract? Um, that's that's step one. Based on that, we can kind of decide what we want, what we need to do with it um, uh, going forward. So the second step is um looking at individual paragraphs in the contract and trying to make sense um, of what's in in that bit of legal text so we call this clause labeling and essentially you take a bit of text from the from uh, from a document and say this is um, a definition this is a um, uh, confidentiality uh, exceptions and you have I think we have dozens of, of labels like that um, so that's step two and the first step is after we know um, what a clause represents we can try to extract certain key values so for example if it's a term clause we can extract the duration in years um, or if it's a governing law clause we can extract the um, the location of the court that uh, is relevant to that contract. Uh, so yeah, those are the three main things we we use ML for. Yeah, and, and for those who uh, who are watching our webinar yesterday, where we did a bit of a demo of, of some of the product, you will have seen those key values being extracted, those clauses being labeled. That's the process Christy was just talking about there. That a document gets ingested into the system, it gets categorized individual clauses get labeled and then that identification of particular key values in in those clauses is what powers that uh, playbook based 
editing system that allows you to, with just that one click, make those edits to change the meaning of certain clauses such that they agree with the set of rules or negotiating requirements that, that a user might have might have specified. Um, so in terms of how we build that solution then, so you know, machine learning and I suppose computer programs in general work most naturally on quite numerical data where numbers can be manipulated, um, but contracts aren't just full of numbers, they're full of words that need to be interpreted in some way, they're made up of text. So how does that work? How do we go about taking that document with the text it contains and turning that into some sort of numerical thing that can be analyzed by by machine learning algorithm? Uh, yeah, so computers still can only really deal with numbers. So yeah, that's a good point. Um, basically, we have um, a special step uh, in which we um, break up a text into, into smaller uh, bits, could be words, could be even smaller than that. And let's say it's, we break it down by word. Then uh, we have a method through which we convert each word into a series of numbers. Um, you can call that a representation of, of words. Um, and using those numerical representations, we can then um, train the model and uh, use it after it's trained. So at the end of the day, yes, it's the numbers. We we'll just have a clever way of converting text to numbers. Great. So we, we get our contract in, we convert all those words into numbers. We put those through our machine learning model that we've trained with this data, and that helps power the rest of the software and helps sort of bring, you know, bring that process to life. Mm -hmm. As we're building that system, Emma, how do we know how well, well it's working? How do we measure success there? And what, what is it that we do to improve it? Yeah, so uh, as you just mentioned, you know, we have this model that we've trained on a training set. Uh, we also have a test set of data, which the model has not seen before, um, so that we can track how well the model is doing on unseen data. So, you know, there are various statistical metrics you can use to, track, to track how well your model is doing um, to give you a measure of your, your false positives or your false negatives. And which measurement you decide to use basically depends on what problem you're you're trying to to solve and what you're trying to optimize for. Um, so that's kind of one of the steps. Uh, we also had a, a lot of feedback from our lawyers, like internally who are using the software. We have a lot of feedback from them as to how well the model is doing on certain types of clauses. Um, and yeah, so anything that our lawyers have marked up is essentially fed into the model again and trained on this so that it can learn from more data, essentially. The more data, the more generalized uh, the model can be. And so in that sense, right, yeah, it's a kind of iterative process where someone interacts with a software, they can either accept or reject that, that inference or those changes, and then that sort of cranks the handle to keep on making it better and better as, as time goes on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that, that's, that, that all sounds great, but are there any particular challenges that we've encountered so far or something specific about the data that we've seen or we have to interact with from clients that, that's especially, uh, especially difficult or challenging? Uh, yeah, so I'll take this one, Christy, unless you wanted to. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure there's plenty of challenges to go around for, for everyone. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so... Um, a particular challenge is like rare outlier clauses within the data set. Um, you know, they can be the, the most important things to, to find, but we don't see many of them. And that can be very hard basically for the model to actually find these things. So that's a, a challenge that we, that we have. Um, and then, yeah, another one is to do with the kind of contracts that we receive. So what kind of format they're in that can can provide a uh, challenging yeah a challenge for the for the model because the initial data might depend on how how those sentences are processed depending on how we receive them so if we receive say an image or well not an image but like a say a scanned pdf is very different from a machine readable pdf uh, those sorts of things 
Yeah, I think one thing that's very specific to legal text is that it's sometimes you have a very long and complex phrase. So uh, even though the, the grammar is perfectly correct, e even as a as a as a human, it's sometimes hard to understand what what it's actually trying to say. Um, so yeah, that's why we we rely heavily on our on our legal experts to kind of help us make sense of uh, these challenging clauses. And those are challenges in terms of how we create those models and make sure that they're they're accurate. Um, are there any challenges or limitations that that you've run into in terms of deploying those models as well and using them in in real products that people people uh, interact with? Um, yeah, so I guess one trade off that we're we're constantly um, having to think about is. Uh, precision or accuracy of of the results and and the model size so usually the larger the model is the more the more accurate it is but it's also slower to use and takes up more more server resources uh, so that's something we need to consider on a case-by-case -case basis depending on what uh, what the product needs yeah, that's a good point, isn't it? It's the sense in which I suppose even as uh, people doing something close to the research side of things, sometimes an engineering side, you always have to be product focused and make sure that we're thinking about uh, what, what's a user actually going to, to feel and think and do when they interact with, with the interface that we've built for them.